right? So, yeah, this one we have like a purple lobule, maybe multi-electrolyte-looking lobule from here. Good. With some dense collagen kind of going through parts of it. Yeah, very dense collagen. Uh, then we start seeing these like cells that are jumping out to us, um, distinct from the rest, and they're like these multi nucleated osteoclast like giant cells and that in and of itself makes me think of like giant cell tumor of the tendon sheath um, very good and then we could look for hemosiderin very good yeah so this is a giant cell tumor of the tendon sheath also known as tina synovial giant cell tumor uh, localized type there is a diffuse type but it's more in, in big joints and deep soft tissue not really a derm path uh, entity I will say that this is something that in derm path you rarely ever see unless you do soft tissue stuff also because usually these are deep nodules attached to dense regular connective tissue, tendon, tendon sheath, fascia, down deep, right? So this is part of the tendon sheath or tenosynovium, which is where these usually arise from, from a, a tenosynovial lined tendon on the hands or fingers or the, the feet or toes. Occasionally you can see them in other bigger joints or arising off of a bursa. Uh, in deep soft tissue, so you can see that. They rarely ever involve the dermis, although I have seen a case that actually pushed up, it was like on the dorsum of like one of the toes, and it pushed up and made a skin polyp and was shaved off uh, by a dermatologist. So, <clears throat> so they can occasionally get up into the dermis, but most of the time they are not. They are usually gonna be down deep and you're not gonna see any skin on the slide. So for a test, if you see a nodule uh, that has giant cells in it, is attached to a tendon sheath of some dense regular connective tissue, has no epidermis over it, the answer you should say is giant cell tumor of tendon sheath. In real life, there are other things that can have giant cells. There's a giant cell tumor of soft tissue, which is not related to this, but can have a little overlap. Uh, and you can also have cases of this where you have very few or no giant cells. So because of that, it's important to recognize how to identify this when the giant cells are very rare or absent. So the thing is that it's interesting here is the giant cells are not the neoplastic cell. They're just hanging out. The neoplasm cell, the cell with the molecular abnormality, is actually these histiocytes, these mononuclear histiocytes that have abundant cytoplasm and an, an eccentric nucleus. They look kind of plasmacytoid or almost rhabdoid because of that eccentric nucleus and the abundant cytoplasm. Those are the actual neoplastic cell. So I want to see those cells in the background. They can be very mitotically active, sometimes have numerous mitoses. They may have a variable amount of inflammation. They usually have dense collagen in the background. They tend to get areas where the cells kind of fall apart and become discohesive, um, like you're seeing in here, like the cells kind of are falling apart and floating around in empty spaces. There will be multinucleated giant cells usually, but in some cases they can be very sparse. It, usually there will be foamy histiocytes or xanthoma cells around the outside, and I looked for a while in this case and couldn't really find those. And then usually there will be hemosiderin present, at least focally. Sometimes it is very abundant. Here's hemosiderin. And then the hemosiderin has a tendency to do this weird thing where it makes a halo or a ring around the periphery of these tumoral histiocytes. So I've got some really good pictures to show you of this here. And if this doesn't make you happy, nothing will. So these cells, I, I call these hemosiderin halos, but they, they've also been called uh, ladybird cells, which is like the British word for ladybug, because sometimes you get like two nuclei and so they look a little bit like a ladybug, I guess. Like, see, here's the, here's the two nuclei, and then there's cytoplasm there. So almost nothing else does this except tenus synovial giant cell tumor. I think I've rarely seen something like this in a joint that had some uh, hemarthrosis, and it was uh, not a giant cell tumor. But almost never, if I see that, this is basically close to pathognomonic for tenus synovial giant cell tumor, giant cell tumor of tendon sheath. All right? So that's a really nice example. And I've got more pictures here. This is on Kiko. You can go... Uh, look at that if you want. And I've got a long video about this entity if you want to see more examples.